and a very good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's USITT New at Noon. My name is Cody, and I'll be your host of these New at Noon sessions every Monday through Thursday at 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Zoom and Facebook Live. This week's online education and training sessions are sponsored in part by LightingTrainer.com. Thank you to Lighting Trainer for your generous support of our virtual programming. If you haven't checked them out yet, please do so as they have an abundant database of resources to utilize and brush up on many trainings offered online during this time. Although our conference may have been canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic, our commitment to education and training has not and will not stop. Every Monday through Thursday right here, uh, USITT will bring you at least two educational sessions, New at Noon and Forum at Four. So what are these sessions? What is New at Noon? Well, New at Noon, uh, this series features some of our new products that you would have seen at our new product showcase and opening night party in Houston. Now we'll be able to introduce uh, new companies that were set to exhibit in Houston as well, as well as new and emerging technologies. We're bringing those to you right here at New at Noon. Again, that's every Monday through Thursday at 12 noon Eastern time. Luckily, with our new virtual environment, we're excited to still be able to bring you these uh, programming and offer you um, all of these series on this online platform. Our other series, Format 4, will take educational sessions that were to be presented uh, in Houston at the conference and translate them to you here in this new virtual environment. These webinars are brought to you by the various US ITT commissions and exhibitors themselves. So be sure to check out our new at noon and Format 4 series. Again, that's every Monday through Thursday at 12 and 4 is Eastern time. The great thing about these webinar series is that you really get a chance to still engage with the industry professionals and get your, your questions answered uh, by industry experts uh, through this online and digital platform. So we're super excited to be able to bring you that, that uh, programming. You can find more information on all these weekly offerings and register them for, for free, which I know is everyone's favorite word right now, on our website at www.usitt.org. And just remember that we will be posting uh, the next week's session every Friday. So double check uh, every Friday for next week's uh, lineup. And we've got some great things coming for you next week as well. Now, with that all being said, we're so excited uh, to have today's guest on New at Noon. Uh, today we have Scott Chaffant, Director of Product Management for Tate Navigator. Scott, welcome to New at Noon. Thank you, Cody. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the time. Of course. Uh, Scott, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about what we're going to learn today um, with uh, Tate IQ powered by Navigator? I'd be happy to. Um, yeah, so thanks for having me. Uh, I come from Tate Towers. Um, many of you who are participating in the call or listening in may be familiar with our company. Uh, our website says we do a lot of complex touring stages, theater engineering solutions, brand activations, or cruise ship installations, et cetera. Um, really what it comes down to is we're, we're the technology solution providers for most of the world's major live entertainment experiences. Um, we're the geeks that get it done and we figure out how to make things work and we do it in rapid time and we deliver what we hope are great experiences for anybody who has an opportunity to attend any of the many events we've been a part of. Um, and I've been really lucky in that I got to join this company as a software product manager, somebody who's worked in the industry for several years managing different software products. Uh, more recently, before I joined Tate, I was running a company that did an Internet of Things um, solution platform similar to what Tate does for entertainment in the industrial and retail side of things. And um, I got an opportunity to come here and help work on what would become um, the next expression of Tate Navigator and how it works and how to make it more accessible to more people. And so in that role, I, I basically create a product roadmap which I communicate with the executive team and then externalize to the, to the market or salespeople and others that basically tell people what kind of features we wanna implement in, um, in our solution and when we think we'll be able to provide them. Uh, I then go through the process of basically designing those features, working with engineering, talking about how they're gonna get implemented, uh, setting projections and estimations for when that time will, will be when we make it, offer those uh, features to the marketplace. And then, like I'm doing today, I'll communicate what we're doing and how we're doing all that and hopefully get people excited about the, the features that we're providing for our users. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Scott. And for those of you that may not have uh, had interaction or be familiar with Tate, uh, I can speak uh, with wearing a couple of different hats here. Obviously, we deal with them. Tate's a really big supporter of USITT and has been for many years, but I have also uh, worked with Tate uh, in various different uh, facets in my career as well. And I can say that uh, they're a, a leader in innovation of new technologies and, uh, and creative technologies, I should say, as well. Uh, and they, you know, all of that um, innovation comes with a tremendous amount of support, customer service, tech support, and all that good stuff. So Tate's a, a really good partner with us, and we're super excited to have you guys with us today. That's great, Cody. Thank you. That, let's I'm glad we're recording that. That was perfect. Appreciate it. <laughs> I'll have to pay you for that one, okay? That was... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Scott, I guess do you want to go ahead and start walking us through uh, some of um, what uh, the IQ uh, for Navigator is and, and how uh, we can access these new online training uh, videos that you guys have uh, published and posted? Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Maybe I should start with just giving a little bit of um, a background on sort of where we're coming from, why we're, we, we've gotten to the place where we're delivering this new solution. Um, Again, many of the people attending this call may be familiar with entertainment automation. Um, I'm gonna be talking about that a little bit um, in this presentation. And basically what that is, is, you know, is a solution that basically allows you to control just about anything that can receive a command above, below, or on a stage or in a live environment. It includes things like motion, which is a lot of where Tate Navigator was born from, but it also includes sound, video protection, atmospheric elements like fog, fog or wind or HVAC systems, just about anything you can plug in and have it talk to a network, it can talk to Navigator. And if it can do that, then we can send commands to it and we can integrate those commands with all the different devices to create some of these more um, elaborate or exciting experiences that you may see. Um, and Tate, Navigator in particular has been doing that a long time. Um, Tate Navigator is really comprised of two different elements. You have the hardware side, which includes things like consoles that are sending all the commands that an operator may want to use um, to every part of the system, every device within it. And then you have the software itself, which is basically the in interfacing all these different devices together. Um, and that allows for operators to control um, what's happening in the live entertainment environment. And then it allows the programmers to sort of set up in queue, if you will, um, what those experiences may look like so they can do it repeatedly day in and day out. Um, and some of the things that can receive those commands, like I talked about earlier, is the machines that actually move um, and doing that safely the lighting, audio, video, et cetera, that are all going to be integrated together um, using Navigator. We've been doing that for over 15 years. We've been doing it for some of the biggest concerts, the spectaculars, Vegas shows, et cetera, uh, all over the world. And um, we're really excited because as we, we went through the experience of delivering those rather often complex shows, uh, Navigator is one of the few solutions that could actually support all of that. But when in doing that, it also creates a lot of potential complexity. And one of the things that you'll see in a lot of software trends over the last decade is a drive to make things more accessible, more intuitive. And so when we were looking at IQ, which is what we're calling our new expression of Navigator, it still has access to all that power that the platform provides but we've been looking at a way, ways to be able to design it to more intuitively integrate to the workflow of the users that use it every day. So operators and programmers, especially, who are sending these commands and programming these shows, they work in the context of, of whatever environment they're in. And there are certain demands that they have to meet, whether it's just moving things safely, sending the uh, commands to the devices within the system in a way that they uh, is actually achieving the goal that their stage manager or the band or other people want to achieve and then doing that in a safe context. And so uh, when we looked at IQ, we were basically trying to say, let's create a more intuitive experience that follows a lot of the workflows and the software paradigms that people use today, whether it's an office application like Word or PowerPoint or whether it's something like an OS in Mac or Windows, you get the notion of pretty quickly of how to use IQ, do certain workflows repeatedly, 
and sort of pick up what else you can do as you go along the way. And in doing that, we're hoping that we make it more accessible to more people. And we also um, allow for the people who are a little more experienced and, and have some um, demands to try and do more elaborate shows to also be able to do that more effectively. So we're making the, um, the sort of ramp to learning quicker, and then we're hoping to accelerate the way people work quicker as well or more rapidly. And that process led us to um, thinking about not only making this software intuitive, but also figuring out how to communicate um, how you can learn it more effectively. And so very early on, we, um, we got a software technical writer who came in and she was right next to the developers in learning about the software and immediately applying her knowledge to a user manual which is accessible in the software very easily. It's an F1, it's included in our default workspace for the software, and it's available alongside the videos that you can now watch that we also started to create. So she went through a process of basically recording and producing and instructing these videos that allow you to learn how to both operate and program a show. And um, rather than um, me just talk about them. Maybe it'd be good for me to share screen and let you see a little bit more um, what they look like and how you can um, access them. And so hopefully now you're seeing my screen. This is hosted right on the Tate website. For those of you um, who and, and will potentially look at this, you can see that there's a domain there, info.tatetowers.com forward slash IQ dash training. Uh, we will, I believe, uh, make that link available with the posting of this recording. And um, if anybody has any questions along the way, I'm always going to encourage you to contact me. You'll see over here on the right-hand side of my, or left-hand side of my uh, video that I have my contact details. You're welcome to contact me there as well. Uh, but let me talk a little bit about what you're looking at on this page. It's the IQ training video series. This is where we're, we're making available for the first time um, these trainings, recording videos to anybody who wants to sign up at tatetowers.com to be able to view them. And we have 16 different videos. Half of them, like I said, were primarily focused on operating. So you'll get introduced to how it works, what are the windows and things that you can do within IQ. Then it gets into the things that you actually can um, do as an operator within a show. So Jogging is a common practice that a lot of operators do where they're manually moving um, axes or machines from one point to another. Uh, we'll take you through that. Then we'll show you how to do specific types of moves, whether they're absolute going to a specific position or relative going to a certain distance. We'll show you how to move lots of different axes, different types of axes, and then how you can monitor them with our device window and see both um, the information that you want to see when you want to see it in a very filtered context and obviously give you troubleshooting workflows that you can use to help address situations when they do arise. Um, likewise, there's um, more advanced um, operating notions around timing and sending things to presets or deads as the Brits call them. And then we go into a whole programming um, workflow where we talk about how you can queue a show. And that really include, includes the um, you know, organizing, creation, and editing of cue lists that can be played during a show itself. And so we'll walk you through how to create them, how you can create different commands within the system, and then um, edit them as you need to make that show more engaging. And so all these videos are typically about three to five, three to 15 minutes or 13 minutes at the, at the greater length. And I'll show you them in a second. If you have questions, I should say, before I leave this page, you can always go to this link here once you get the link to this page. And it'll allow you to actually fill out information that you can send directly to Tate about what you're interested in regarding IQ. So it could be about potentially learning more about it. It could be about training. It could be about um, maybe using it in a show that you're planning. In any event, you can fill out this form and we'll, somebody like myself will likely um, go ahead and um, respond to that and try and give you the information you need. And Scott, now, once uh, you're just on the... to, sorry, sure. just to 
reminder, just to remind everybody that's uh, tuning in today, um, if you have questions regarding this session uh, as well, just be sure to follow those instructions and click on that link on, uh, on the training website. Um, and then as Scott was saying, it'll get you uh, to an industry professional tape and they'll be able to answer those and discuss that with you. Yeah, maybe before I jump over, um, is there any questions that you have for me, Cody, before I go to the next point in the uh, demonstration? Um, are the, just to uh, be clear, are these um, are these trainings accessible for free online once once they've sort of registered through Tate, or how does that work? That's a great question. Uh, yes, they are all available for free. The only thing okay. you need to do, like if I click on these links here, is you'll see I get taken to our uh, Tate support portal, and as you can see um, in the pop up that I have here, it'll just ask you to sign up. And so if you're new to Tate, you don't already have an account. All you have to do is click that sign up, fill in your name, put in your email, confirm you're not a robot, and you're good to go. Um, you'll be able to get a registration link and you'll be able to sign in and then be able to view not just um, these videos, but other really useful information about both IQ and Navigator in general. Um, as I am an agent in the system already, I can go ahead, put in my login information and sign in. And when I do, I'm getting dropped right now into that support portal and more specifically right to the videos that we were talking about previously, which are available for free to anybody who signs up to them. And we'll keep them posted up here. And of course, if we edit them or, or change them at all, those will be those updates will be posted here as well. You can even follow the pages so that if you chose to um, you know, learn when they do get updated, you'll certainly get that information as we make those changes. And so you'll see here on the left-hand side, these are just some of all the videos that I was talking about earlier. There's a total of 16 of them. And then I have the video here, which I can easily just press play and start watching or expand it to look at it in full screen. Um, and there's another really unique thing here as well. As I look at any one of these videos, I can also click on the IQ manual, the user manual I was referencing earlier. Um, we actually have, have set it up so that if you click the link, you can go right to the area where we're, we're watching the videos and, and potentially go and look at the pages themselves and learn more about um, what's going on at the context of what you're seeing. And here you're looking at our Epic console which is um, a new console that we've developed to, to use specifically the IQ software to be able to make that experience much tighter, much more intuitive to users. And we're excited to make that available to people over the next year. Um, so if I go back to the video page, as I talked about previously, um, I can make all any one of these videos available and I can look through them all. And hopefully people who visit our website and get this link, can go ahead, sign up, and have an opportunity to view any one of them um, that we've posted here. Perfect. And for someone that might uh, be sort of new to Tate, uh, new to the Navigator platform and system, um, would you suggest any other sort of a precursory video to watch before they get into IQ? Or is this, is this a good platform uh, for people to just sort of launch in from like a, almost a beginner standpoint? Uh, that's a great question, Cody. The, uh, these videos imply that you have some automation experience. So we're not teaching you how to basically become an operator or a programmer necessarily. Um, I do think that there, we do, we are looking at, we, especially with our in-person classes that we've provided, um, we allow for an intro to automation in those classes that can help people get a better understanding of the context of what they're doing and how motion works in a, in a theater system and what kind of things you need to know. Um, in the context of the software and the videos that you're looking at today, uh, it's more about how to use the software effectively. And so um, if, you, if you don't have operating experience previously or automation experience, I certainly recommend that you um, look for more introductory um, type of documentation, textbooks, videos, that might be available out there to help you um, get an understanding of that before you would understand how to apply that knowledge to the IQ software specifically. Perfect. And also just one other question 
Uh, is there an actual um, like online demo available of IQ, or is that something that's in the works down in the in the future? That's that's an, that's another great question. We have made that available. Um, we're doing some work on the server now, and we hope to get that back up shortly. Uh, but we will, uh, in fact, many of these videos are, are specifically designed to be able to be watched while you're working with our virtual version of okay. the IQ software. So in that, you would download the software, um, log into our cloud demo, it's, as it's called, and then you'd be, have a set up environment that is aligned to the way the videos work so that you could go hand in hand with both of them. And we've done that with several users and people who are interested should contact me. And as soon as we get um, the servers all set up so we can handle the volume, then I'll be happy to help people get that experience. Perfect. And just uh, to let everyone know as well, if you were, if you would come to our show uh, last year um, in Louisville, you would have uh, seen we were actually offering uh, automation training uh, through Tate on the show floor. And that is something that we are working on trying to get up and going with Tate. So just uh, keep checking in again on that um, usht.org resources page and for our webinars and trainings uh, as soon as we get that information released. And have a date for that, we will make sure that we get that published as well. But we are looking into a little bit of a further discussion on this topic uh, a little bit later on in May. Yeah, we were we were really happy to be a part of that last year. Um, our um, online trainer, Lisa, who you all see in many of these videos, was uh, training many of the people who participated in that event last year, was hoping to do it this year. And I'm sure we'll be looking forward to um, continuing that in the future. And in the meantime, these videos are a great way to get some of that experience um, right from your home. Perfect. One other question I had for you, Scott. Uh, would you say IQ is scalable for you know large, large productions, small productions, uh, and anything in the middle? Do you think that is a, it's a good fit for it? Uh, I love that question. Thank you, Cody. Um, we actually spent a lot of time, as you know, we came from Navigator, which literally has controlled hundreds of different machines and lighting systems and everything else um, at the same time simultaneously and knew that we would need to be um, addressing IQ in much the same way. And so uh, in the design of IQ, in, especially in what we call our device window, where we're giving a lot of the the feedback of what's happening in the show. We have designed it to scale so that you get multiple different views, as much as 12 different views of information on every device in the system. That could be as small as like 50 pixels and you know just gives you a little bit of a, a rectangle, rectangle to look at that tells you it's good or bad effectively and a little bit more. Or you can look up to a much larger block of information that tells you all kinds of things about the device. And so if you want to look at something that just five things, you'll get lots of information. And if you want to look at a few hundred, you can also do that in a single window. And by the way, with IQ, you can set up multiple windows that are all filtered to look at different information at different scales. So I can have one monitor that's set up that's looking at as many as a few hundred things. And I can have another monitor that's just looking at troubleshooting issues or things that, that go bad that I need lots of information on them. And so I can break up the way I look at that information so that it helps me run that show successfully and safely. Perfect. And, and Scott, I know that last year uh, at the show uh, in Louisville, um, IQ was tested on the Polaris console. Uh, and a few of our attendees got to have a little sneak peek at it there. Uh, is IQ still compatible with that console? Yes, it is. Um, we've designed it to be compatible with both the Polaris and the Epic console that we previewed earlier. Um, so, yeah, we, we're making sure that we support all our customers, those that are using IQ now um, and those that will use it in the future, and they'll have the option to do it on either of those consoles. Perfect. Um, I think that's it for now. All right. Um, again, thank you so much for um, letting us or hosting this, this this afternoon, letting me be a part of it. Uh, I encourage anybody to contact me on the information that's behind me on the slide, and um, and I'd be happy to try and answer any further questions anyone may have. Perfect. Let me just double check. I think I think we've just got a few more in, um, so I just wanted to double check here. 
Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, how does the software integrate uh, in the in with the hardware? Is there a specific hardware that you need to use the software, or can it work with any automation gear? Uh, the software is designed to work with our consoles. It runs on Windows, so effectively, like we talked about earlier, getting that cloud demo experience, you can run it on your on a on a Windows platform and 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 have that in CIQ just as you would see it in a console. Um, but we have not designed it at this time to run on consoles that are not tape manufactured. Okay, perfect. And Scott, if you if you can answer this one, because I know a lot of uh, Tate's work uh, is a little bit top secret, maybe you can't share projects, but do you have a specific use that might be your favorite that you've seen uh, use IQ, whether that be a show or a tour or a production or whatever that might be? A favorite. That's yeah. You're putting me in a, in a tight position there. <laughs> we'll keep that one. To, we'll keep um, that I, one to ourselves. Yeah. No. I. I mean. I. It, it's it, the thing about anything that we do in automation is there's always a unique challenge. And what's What's remarkable about working on a software application like this is while many of our customers use many of the same features, they use them so differently. Uh, right. They really want to create their own experiences, and so it's really a question of the level of creativity, scale um, uh, that they want to apply um, using the software. And so uh, I'm excited about especially some of the things that we've been talking about with uh, our customers going forward. That that'll be really great expressions of it. But at this time, I don't think I can talk about it. Okay, perfect. Awesome. And um, let me, I'm just trolling the, the thread here just to see if there's anything else that we might have missed. Um, I think that's good. You've answered some amazing questions. So I think we, uh, we've got them all wrapped up there. And like Scott said, you can also, follow, if you have further questions, you can follow up with him directly. Uh, his contact information is listed there. We'll also get that posted in the chat uh, so that you all have that as well. Scott, do you have anything else to add? No, I think I've, I've said about as much as I can. I Again, thanks so much for having me. And I look forward to hearing from anybody who has more questions about IQ and helping them learn more about it and how they can use it themselves. Perfect. Well, thank you so much to Scott and uh, to the entire Tate team for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And we hope that you, our viewers on Zoom and on Facebook Live, have enjoyed the session today. We look forward to welcoming you back to another one of our online education and training sessions in the near future. Uh, later this afternoon, we have our Format 4 series. We're actually hosting two of those series on two different webinar platforms, so uh, you can sort of pick and choose which one you'd rather uh, join. Um, the first one is Current Practices of Re Current Practices and Research in Sound. Uh, that's one of the ones at four. And then our other uh, Format 4 session is QList, Reinventing Collaboration for Theater and Live Events. Uh, two exciting topics that you won't want to miss. So if you haven't registered for those this afternoon, please do so. Again, that's available on our website, usitte.org. And then uh, we'll take a break on Fridays. We don't do any uh, sessions on Fridays. Uh, we actually have to catch up on a little bit of our normal work uh, that we are that we have during the week to plan for um, next year's uh, event. Uh, but we'll be back right here on Monday uh, for New at Noon. We'll be joined by Clem Herod. Uh, Clem is the author of Career Projection 101, an independent contractor's guide to successful business and a balanced life. Uh, Clem and his team, um, they believe it's their mission to coach, lead, educate, and mentor those wanting long-term success. I can tell you, uh, I'm no longer uh, an independent contractor. I was for many years, and I'm reading Clem's book right now, and it's really, really good, and I think it's got some really good information uh, for what we're going through today uh, and for sort of making sure that you're set as an independent contractor uh, once all of this crazy pandemic uh, concludes and we're back to this sort of a normal life again. So be sure to check us out on Monday, uh, right here at noon um, for our session with Clem. Uh, if you haven't already registered uh, for those sessions, please do on our website, again, www.usitt.org. And um, be sure to look at the page tomorrow. We'll be releasing all of our content for next week for both of those session topics. Uh, while you're at it, please go ahead and be sure to like us on all of our social media channels as well, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, we're there. Uh, and that's the best way to make sure that you stay up to date on all the latest USITT news and offerings. We'd also like to take this opportunity to thank our friends at the American Society of Theater Consultants 
for their generous support in making these webinars and broadcasts possible. Thank you, ASTC. If you have a moment at the completion of this webinar, as soon as I hit end meeting, you're gonna be uh, prompted to take a quick survey. This survey just makes sure that we are providing you the content that you want to see and need to see during this time. If you have just a few moments, it's a short survey, we'd ask that you please complete that at the end of the session. Once again, thank you uh, to Scott, thank you Tate, and thank you to you all for joining us today for today's meal at noon. On behalf of all of us at USIDT, we wish you all the best. Have a great afternoon, have a great weekend, and we'll see you right back here same time on Monday. Stay well, everyone. Thank you.